Hey everybody, hey. welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Color Correcting Foundation. And we have seen ads for this all over all Instagram. Over. Mm -hmm. Actually, we first started seeing them back when we first started this channel, I started seeing it. So it has taken us until now to, to actually <laughs> give it a try. So this product has a weightless formula. It is baked for 24 hours and hand finished in Italy. It applies like a powder, but has the benefits of a cream. It contains color correcting swirls of pigment and adjusts to match your skin tone. And it provides a light to medium coverage with a natural finish. And it is made for all skin types. Now this product, according to the website, says it's perfect for mature skin, uneven complexion, and fine lines and wrinkles. <laughs> And one thing that I thought was so interesting about the Laura Geller brand is that they are proud to support the National Rosacea Society. And this foundation was the first foundation to earn a seal of, of approval from the National Psoriasis Foundation. So we both purchased this on Amazon and we both paid $34. And I, the reason I bought it on Amazon was because I was buying other things. And so I thought, oh, they have it on here. I'm going to buy it. But you know, really check out Laura Geller's website because they frequently have sales and we could have gotten it cheaper yeah. on there. Even though it still is a high-end product, we could have we could have saved some money. So I bought the color medium. And on the website, they have a color uh, helper to help you pick the color. So, uh, but I found that medium worked for me. I did the same. I also chose medium and I kind of based it on other foundations that I have purchased in the past that were more of a medium tone. So I kind of went with that and I lucked out. I think I chose the perfect shade. So I applied this three ways. I, I did it all on its own without anything, just moisturizing and putting the product on. And then I used a primer, but I used two different primers. So I actually used it three different ways. I used the product with the Laura Geller retractable bookie brush. And I find I found that this worked really well in the application process for me. I actually did it four ways, four different ways. I tried it with two different primers and those were drugstore, both drugstore primers. Then I tried it with a tinted moisturizer underneath. And then the last time I tried it, I tried it completely by itself. Now, when I was looking on the website after I already purchased it, I was kind of looking about the, you know, finding information about the product. They did suggest to use a dense brush. I did not purchase the foundation brush that they suggest and I was looking in all of my brushes and the only dense brush I had was the Real Techniques RT228 and I loved this brush. This brush worked really, really well with the product. So if you didn't buy the brush that they suggest from the website, but you have a dense brush, I think it'll work equally as well. When I applied it, um, I wanted a light coverage. I am not a big fan of heavy foundation. So I tend to really wear tinted moisturizers um, most of the time. However, as I'm getting older, I'm 55 years old, I do have a lot of um, skin issues, um, just redness, little uh, blood vessels and some dark spots. So I do need some extra help, you know, as I'm getting older, but I find a lot of products enhance my wrinkles and things. So for me, I was looking for a light coverage with medium coverage where I needed it. And I found that using this brush and using the techniques that they had um, suggested got me that look. So I, I just swirled the brush um, in the product and then did more sweeping motion to get the light coverage. Then I went back and um, kind of spot treated, kind of dabbed it on, and I was able to get a more concentrated look in the areas where I needed the help with out a big difference in the in the two. So it didn't look heavier in one area than it did in the other. It just the amount of coverage I had was different, so if that makes sense. Um, but I will tell you because it, it is a medium coverage when you do apply it more concentrated, I still needed some help with uh, concealer. I had to spot treat. And, and you know, it's just, it's my skin and it's not looking good sometimes. And so I did need to use a concealer to spot treat those areas. But I found that the overall look, doing the sweeping and the dabbing and the concealing really did um, 
what I needed it to do but I did use it just by itself and the look is a little bit different I found it was more of a satin look it was still great coverage the way that I needed it but it was more of a, a satin look then I used two different primers and they're drugstore primers. I used the e.l.f. liquid putty primer, uh, poreless putty primer, and then I also used the Wet n Wild Glass Correct. And these both worked equally well with the product. Uh, it, the foundation went well over both of these. They just gave me a different look. So with the um, putty primer from e.l.f., it was more of a satin look. It wasn't matte, it was more of a satin look. Um, which was which was nice. It, it looked it looked really nice, and I liked the end result. But I am a dewy gal. I like a dewy look. So using the glass correct from Wet n Wild was my favorite look of the three that I did. And I will say that because this has a green tint to it, it helps with some of the redness that I have. So this with the foundation and then spot treat if I needed to was the winning look for me with all three of these. So I applied it pretty much the same way you did. I wanted light coverage in some areas and a little bit more fuller coverage in other areas, especially on my cheeks because I do have quite a bit of redness on my cheeks. So I just swirled the brush in the product and you know did sweeping motions for the lighter coverage, then went in and kind of pressed the brush into the product and then just dabbed on the areas, the same as you, on the areas that I needed a little bit more fuller coverage. And I found that just doing that, it covered so well. I did not have to use additional concealer to nice. cover up any areas, which is really odd for me because I typically do have to, you know, use concealer under certain foundations. So I did not, I will say I did not use it under my eyes. I just pretty much used it on my forehead, all on my face, but not under my eyes. So when I first tried this out, I wanted to try it with one of my most favorite drugstore primers, and that is the NYX Marshmallow Primer. It is one of my favorites. Okay. So I wanted to use it and see how this product worked with it. And I will say, I did not like how this paired with it. And I, I was shocked by that because it I usually pair, it, this usually pairs well with anything. But I felt like the overall look looked a little bit more powdery to me. So I wasn't a fan and it was starting to really kind of skew my thoughts on the product because I was like, oh, it is a little bit too powdery. The second primer I paired it with was the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. And I actually liked how the product looked with this primer because like you said, it, it wasn't a matte finish, but it was more of a satin, but my skin looked smooth. It was a, it, it, the product applied smoothly on top of this and it gave a nice satin smooth look. So I did like using it with this primer better than the NYX primer. Then I tried it with the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer and that was how, that was the day I started to turn around with my thoughts on the product. My skin looked dewy because this is a dewy tinted moisturizer that I did look like my skin had a glow. The product paired beautifully with this. It just went on so smoothly and I loved how my skin looked with it. But I will say my most favorite way to apply this product is without a primer at all. Without a primer or a setting spray, this product looked absolutely beautiful on my skin. Now I will tell you I'm wearing it today. We're both wearing the product today and I do not have um, a primer and I did not use the tinted moisturizer. I just used my regular everyday CeraVe moisturizer that I typically use. And the product looks amazing. This by far is my favorite way. And that is so different from other foundations that I've used where I've had to use a primer or I've had to use a setting spray. This is just me and the product and I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So overall, applying the rest of my makeup, everything applied well. So all the players played well together. I There was no blotching, no, none of that. Everything looked great. Everything played well together. And the overall look, I love, I love. And for me, I did not have any creasing, any powderiness, any of the things that this type of, of foundation tends to do for my skin. I had none of that with this. At the end of the day, I still loved how my skin looked. Now I did use 
a setting spray. When I used the primer, the product, and then a finishing spray, I found that it lasted a good 12 hours, if not longer, because at the end of the day, when I'm taking my makeup off, I'm still, I'm taking the foundation off. So it is still there. It's faded, but it's still there. So overall look for me, loved it. I absolutely loved how every other bit of makeup that I put on went on over this product. It was seamless. It was smooth. You know how sometimes when you're putting on your contour or your blush and other foundations, it kind of gets stuck, you know, and it's mm -hmm. hard to blend. I did not have that issue at all with this foundation. I loved how the final look of my makeup looked with this product. So throughout the day, I kept checking my makeup. I'm like, it still looks really good, which shocked me because I did not use a setting spray. So I really wanted to see how this was going to look at the end of the night. And with other powder foundations that we have tried, I hated the way my skin looked. It enhanced every bit of wrinkles. I've got wrinkles around my eyes. I've got the crow's feet. I've got deep wrinkles here. I have really deep, I guess what you call the marionette lines. So when we've used powder foundations before, I've had so much settling, so much creasing in, especially in that area. And at the end of the night, while I did have some fading, so I agree, I had the same fading that you had, but I did not have the creasing or the cakiness. It made my skin at the end of the night look so good. It was, it was glowy and really mm -hmm. just smooth. So there was still product there, but a little bit of fading because like you, when I did remove it and it removes very, very easily, yes. I had some makeup still left on my um, wipe. Mm -hmm. So overall, our overall thoughts about this, first off, is it worth the price? So again, it's a sticker shock type of product. It's $36, although you can get it on sale. Even on sale, it's still a high-end product. So for me, when I'm looking at a product, and again, being 55, I have to be very careful what I put on my skin because I want it to, I know it's not a miracle product. I know it's not gonna take everything away, but I don't want anything enhanced that I don't want enhanced. And this made my skin look so good. I can't even, I can't express that enough people that, I mean, it goes on as a powder, but it, it, it looks like I put on a cream foundation in the best way possible. So for me, if a product is going to do that and I like it that much, I will find a way to put it in my budget because there are other products that I love that are budget products. So I know that I can work my budget so that I can buy this product. And for me, because of the coverage that I want and the amount of product that goes on, I think this will last a really long time. So I'm not gonna be paying $36 every two weeks, right. two, three weeks, because this is gonna last for a really long time. And I, for me, since we have tried this product, I have used it every day. And coming from a person who almost always wears tinted moisturizer, that says something about this product. So for me, definitely worth the price. I absolutely think it is worth the price for the reasons that you mentioned. I too think I don't want to spend $36 on a foundation that I have to replace even in three weeks. I want something that's going to last me. And with the amount of product that you really do need to use with this, this product is going to last you a long time. So you can definitely, I think, work it into your budget. Second, why I think it's so worth it is I have a hard time with my mature skin. I'm gonna be 51 and I do have problem areas. So I have a hard time finding foundations that are going to work well with my skin. And I have normal to dry. So I have a lot of different areas that are troublesome for me and trying to find the perfect foundation is a little bit hard. I will say with all of that, this by far has been my most favorite high-end foundation that we have tried. And I, like Cheryl, since we started testing this, I have been wearing this every single day. This has been my go-to because it does not feel heavy. It is so buildable that it never feels heavy on your skin. So I do like a full coverage. So, you know, I'm a little bit different than she is, although I do love tinted moisturizers. 
I do like a, a bit of a full coverage and this does gives you the coverage without feeling heavy on your skin. Your skin can breathe. So I absolutely think this is worth it. This is by far my most favorite foundation that's high end. And if you are somebody who has skin like us and is on the more mature side, I say check the website as often as you can for deals because I think you'll really like this. Yeah, I was so pleasantly surprised. I was so skeptical going into this yeah. because of our experience with previous products. Agreed. I was so pleasantly surprised. It had exceeded all the high expectations I had. So for me, this is a five-star product, even with the price tag. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this video and you found a lot of useful information. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And also check us out on Facebook and Instagram because we're there too. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Bye. Bye.